I'm Eric Glesser. I'm here with Spiderco. I'm going to go over some of the new product for 2016. Uh, the first one I have on the mat here uh, is part of our Ethnic series. Um, every year we come out with a knife that is designed after some place in the world. Uh, typically all around the world they've been producing knives for many hundreds if not thousands of years and they tend to have their own style. So this one is from Sardinia, the island of Sardinia, uh, just out uh, part of Italy, just off the mainland. Uh, and they have a very unique knife that they've been making for, for a very long time. One of the attributes of that knife is this very unique shape. You're going to see a little bit of belly here, a larger, straighter, finer tip. Um, it's a very unique shape that we haven't found anywhere else. Another feature that you're going to see in these Sardinian knives are these straight handles, this little hook at the back, a little guard in the front. So if you know the Sardinian knife, which they call them patatas, and so this knife is called the patata, uh, you'll see it, it's very reminiscent of what you'll see there. Oftentimes they're made with wooden handles. Naturally they don't usually have a clip. Uh, usually they're made with a slip joint feature or a non-locking knife. So this one, to make it a modern folder, we used 3D G10. Um, we added the liner lock with full liners, skeletonized. We added a deep pocket wire clip so that it, it sits in the pocket uh, nice with the lanyard hole just exposed outside and did add the lanyard hole. It comes with a full flat S30V, so it's a very uh, modern steel. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, this comes with uh, N690, made in Italy by Fox Knives, and so we're we ha it, we're very proud to have uh, the Italians make this knife, particularly because it's uh, an Italian ethnic series knife. And so this is the patata, just the next piece in our ethnic series. Um, the next knife I'll go over is an old classic of ours. Um, early, in the early 90s, we developed this knife that has a shackle on it. Uh, little shackle so that if you're wearing a BC or you're doing some rock climbing, it, it's another option to hook it to you besides the clip. This one is going to be part of our salt series, which is a non locking or a, which is a rust free knife, so it's completely rust free. It's using our H1 material, which is a nitrogen based work hardening steel, so it, it won't rust on you, but it does keep fairly good edge retention. We're making this one in all yellow with a black uh, insert, black craton rubber insert, so it has good grip when it's also wet. Uh, we'd never made them in yellow previous, but since it's our salt series, we wanted to, to show a little bit. Um, some of these colors like yellow and orange tend to show very well in water, also at great depths. As you go down through the depths of water, you tend to lose some colors, and yellows and oranges tend to, to stay brighter longer. And so this is uh, just another addition to our salt series. We felt it would be a nice addition because of the uses that many of our salt series are being used for, whether you're whitewater rafting, rock climbing, or diving. This uh, we're calling the Introvert. A very unique folder for us. It was designed by a, nine, a, a man named Chris Knutson. Uh, when he sent it to us, he sent it to us as just a, a plastic pin together model, but right away we thought it had some nice attributes to, to begin to work with. What we did like about it is it uses this four finger hole, popularized by Fred Perrin, uh, first, first to use that. The, this large four finger hole that you can get your, your finger through is good because it's not easily going to drop out of the hand during use. Also it gives you the ability to use your hands while the knife is still in your hands so that you can grab, cut, and then grab again. So it's going to give you some flexibility. Another feature about this is that when you do close this, is, this is one of the reasons that we call it the introvert, this pairing hole goes through the middle of the scale into a back lock mechanism. Uh, so it's a back lock that also has a flipper, um, or you could also use your round hole, also has the guard through it. And, or the round hole. So having a hole that you can get your forefinger through, uh, using the flipper, using the back hole mechanism, or back lock mechanism, we felt that it had a lot of unique things that we had never seen before and we felt it was a nice design. 
There are some little features that we did to just add some touch that like we chamfered the inside of the hole. We radius the outside here so it feels good in the hand. Uh, the back lock's gonna give you a very secure lock so you don't have to worry about it. Great self-close. Uh, made in a VG10, full flat grind, G10 scales, wire clip, lanyard hole. Um, it has a lot of the very nice features that you look for in a Spyderco with some uh, nice added design. So this is designed by uh, Chris Metzen, called the Introvert. Uh, this next knife is a collaboration that we're doing with a guy from Belgium named Philip Delu. One of the things that we liked about this knife when, we, when he submitted it was that he has a slight recurve here with a belly and another bit of a recurve. So it's gonna give you a very fine uh, tip for, for getting in for intricate cutting. Also gives you that nice recurve where it draws in some of the things you're cutting with some belly to work with and another recurve. So it's gonna give you some options in your cutting that you're not gonna see in most of your typical folders. We did add a lot of very nice custom pieces or custom-esque pieces that he adds to his knife. It's got a very unique custom clip that we don't add to any other knife, so it's unique to just this knife. It uses a 3D machine scale, so it, it does have some curve to it. The backside is flat though, with a reeve integral lock. Uh, we're using a marble carbon fiber on that. And because it does have that curved machining, it's a very good quality, no void, marble carbon fiber. Uh, screw together construction, we added big pins substantially all the way through. So it's gonna be very sturdy, um, but also give it a nice unique look. The fit and finish on the bolster, the spine work, the G10, the 6AL4 titanium, the large pins. Um, it really just has a lot of those very nice quality features you look for, uh, made in S30V. And so this we're calling the Myrtle, designed by Philippe Delu of Belgium. Um, this knife, many people are probably gonna recognize right away. It's a, it's a Chinese folder designed by Bob Lum. We've made uh, two other versions of this in the past. One was a mid-sized version, and then we had a, a much larger version, probably about that big. Um, through requests of customers and that Bob did design a small one for us before he passed, uh, we decided to pull it out of the shelves or the, the, the old log and, and bring it back into production. So it, it has a lot of the features you're gonna see on his Chinese folders, which he did popularize. It does have a little bit more belly than you typically see in a lot of his Chinese folders. Um, that became a little bit of a design um, issue with us because we uh, were a little behind on his production. We couldn't find his original little one. We went forward with it, and when we were all said and done, we found out that it did have a little bit more belly. So those people that do collect lums and are very into the lum designs are gonna find it has a little bit more belly, but it's, it's very Bob Lum. So it has a reversible uh, clip made in G10. Comes with skeletonized liners, full flat VG10. Um, it's just a very nice quality Japanese piece uh, made for the Chinese folder uh, designed by Bob Lum. Uh, this next one um, is called the Ouroboros. Uh, this was designed by a man out of Michigan. He sent it to us originally um, because it fit very well with the compression lock. It had a very nice guard. Um, we felt that, that the design fit Spyderco very well. The thumb opening hole or the Spyderco hole uh, worked very well. Um, the, the compression lock worked very well with it ergonomically. It was a nice size, has that deep pocket wire clip, nice lanyard hole. So we felt that it was a, a very nice design and began to move forward with it. So the designer's name is Paul Alexander. Uh, and we're happy to bring this one to the market soon called the Ouroboros, oh, nested compression lock, by the way. Um, these next two knives just hit the market. Uh, one's called the Mantra, one's called the Mantra 2. This being the Mantra, this being the Mantra 2. They're the same knife, virtually. 
Um, the big difference between them is that one has a, a larger Spyderco hole, one has the smaller, uh, smaller trademark Spyderco hole. Uh, so with the smaller one, the hole is not accessible. You have to use just the flipping mechanism. Uh, with the uh, Mantra, both the hole uh, and the flipper are uh, easily accessible. So it has uh, ball bearings inside, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to flip very well. It's got a full flat CPM M4 steel, which is a, um, a tool, a powdered tool, uh, tool steel, so it, it has great edge retention. Tends to have a little bit more corrosion resistance, uh, so certainly try to pay attention to that. Um, it comes with a Reeve Integral Lock, uh, stainless interface, also with a stainless over travel stop. Uh, one of the questions I get sometimes is, you know, sometimes we use a stainless interface, sometimes we don't on our titanium Reeve Integrals. Something like this, where you're going to get a lot of impact, it's a thinner blade, you're going to want a stainless interface. Uh, sometimes if it's got a thicker blade, you're going to be opening it more traditional, the titanium's a little bit thicker, you're not going to require the stainless interface. So some of our knives have it, some of them don't, but, but this one does. Uh, deep pocket wire clip little touches like we chamfered the flipper so it doesn't doesn't uh, rub in the pocket so much uh, doesn't scratch you so much a little easier when you're flipping it um, but uh, essentially they're the same knife in ergonomics uh, except for one has a hole opener and one doesn't this knife uh, was another collaboration this one was designed by Michael Henningsen uh, gaining more and more traction in the custom world all the time. One of the things that uh, he's known for is very beautiful knives, uh, nice gents pieces. He's an architect, so he's got a great eye, does also some very good engravings. Um, this is a very good reminiscent of what he's, he's bringing to the market. Some of the nice little touches that we have with this is we have uh, dual nested um, carbon fiber inlays. It's a near perfect fit, no seam, it feels great. Um, it's got titanium 6AL4V titanium scales with a titanium backspacer. Also with this we blued it um, and then we, we worked on it and then blued it again so that you're going to get some variation between the chamfer in the darkness of the bluing there and then the bluing on the inside. The chamfer is going to be a little bit darker. It's going to be a little bit darker near this lanyard hole. The lanyard hole is also a nice uh, feature that it extends outside. It's part of the backspacer, but the, the scales don't cover it, so it's going to be a little bit thinner. You're going to have some more flexibility in attaching things to it. Uh, it's got a reversible hourglass clip, a nice uh, Spyderco trademark hole. He's got a very unique shape on this one. That's another reason why we decided to pick this one up. Uh, it's got a nice belly in here for when you're cutting, it tends to draw the, the stuff inside the center of the curve so that it, it, it draws for the cutting. Um, it's got a, a secondary point here and then cuts back so that if you're going towards that nice flat tip, uh, you can get down and, and work with that tip and get some more intricate cutting with that, that uh, secondary tip there. So it does leave you some some more options for how you're going to use your cutting chores. He does do some fishing, so that was a little bit of a, uh, an influence on it, on cutting twine and, and, and different lines. Uh, this one's made with CPM S30V, um, but it's just fit and finish, quality, uh, very, very difficult to do. We're very proud with the quality and the execution of the piece. So that's a Michael Henningsen collaboration. Um, this one is called the tie stick. Many people might recognize this. Uh, Brian Ty has been making the tie stick for many years. Um, many people are more familiar with the tie stick that does not have the Spyderco trademark hole. I'm out of requests uh, from this from many years ago because we've known Brian Ty a long time. This knife we've probably had about 10 years. Uh, he sent us this prototype that did incorporate the Spyderco round hole. So it does give you a, a very nice option for opening and closing. It has a very unique modified Tonto. Uh, it's got a swedge on the top that's on a single side, but not the back side. It's got amazing machine fluting through the 6AL4V titanium. That's on both sides. Nice open uh, construction, nice big pins. It's a Reeve integral lock. This doesn't have the interface, but if you compare it to something 
like the Mantra, where you have a much thinner blade, much thicker G10. Um, you're not opening and closing it nearly the same. You're going to have a lot more flexibility. So on something like this, we didn't think you, we needed that full interface. This comes with S90V, one of the more premier steels in the market, uh, a reversible hourglass clip, lanyard hole. Originally when he designed it, it was a nice tactical folder. It's got a nice hook in the back, a nice hook in the front for pour, for, forward or, or pull cutting, a great tip that has great strength. Um, but besides the tactical aspect of it, it's, it's a very nice user and a very beautiful piece. Uh, very hard to execute and we're proud to finally get a Brian Ty in the market with us. So this is the Ty stick. Um, this next one we're calling the, um, the Mamba. Uh, this is a collaboration between uh, Joe Perella and Walter Brand. Um, if you know both of those custom makers, you're going to see some of the char characteristics from both designers. For Walter Brand, you're going to see that nice, classic, sweeping blade, those beautiful grinds. Uh, one of the things Walter Brand is known for as well is his great polishes. Well, this one's made out of S90V, or no, this is S30V, I apologize. Um, and it's very hard to get that that very mirror polish. So with this one, we do have a coating on it. Um, the coating has a little bit of a two-tone to it. You're gonna see a little bit darker on the big hollow grind, a little bit um, different uh, finish on the, the flat portion. Now this is the prototype, and so right now it, it says Walter Brand, but in production naturally it says Perella Brand. If you know Perella, you're gonna see some of that handle. Uh, Perella's got a very distinct handle. Um, and the combination of that nice Perella handle, that nice Walter Bren blade has just brought together a, a beautiful piece. It's got a great guard in the front for that forward, great hook in the back for that back cutting. Uh, it's got three dimensional carbon fiber, um, very good quali quality carbon fiber too. You're not gonna see voids in this machine to perfection. It's got full titanium liners, skeletonized G10 backspacer. It's got a nice hourglass clip. It's got ball bearings in it. The action and the flow of this knife is supreme. You can use the spidey hole very well, as well as the flipper. Um, uh, no expense spared. Uh, we're very, very proud of this uh, Mamba to work with Walter Brand and Joe Perella on it. Uh, so this should be hitting the market soon. Um, Next, I'm just going to show this. It's a knife that we've been making in the line for some time. This is the Manix 2. Uh, the reason I'm showing it is we're doing a series of knives that uses this midnight. Um, some people on the forums or online call it blurple, uh, but it's a very dark blue. Uh, we're doing it um, in lightweight and in G10, and every knife that comes with this unique color will come in 110V, uh, CPM 110V, um, and it'll be regular production. And so this is the Manix 2 in that dark blue, but you'll also see the paramilitary, the military, um, and, and uh, the rest of our line, the native. And Now there's a few of them that we may not have. The Pakal is a good example, um, but for the most part, most of our American line will come in a variation of a dark blue 110V. So this is just an example of that piece. Um, this year is our 40th anniversary. Uh, January uh, seven, January 1976 uh, was when the start, so we just passed our 40th. Uh, to commemorate that, we're coming out with our native that has a nice 40th uh, in anniversary engraving on it. This one is going to be unique that it has a very nice handle. It's a fluted carbon fiber, um, so it's got it's all machined completely, 100%. It's got a great texture in there. It's got some 3D curve to it. Um, another nice feature about this that you won't see on, on our other natives is that it's linerless, um, unlike our G10 version. So without those liners, it really reduces the weight. The carbon fiber is very strong, um, so it's going to hold the lock back. It's going to hold um, the screws, everything it needs to. Um, this one comes in a, um, a damask steel. Uh, this one is their thorn pattern, which was also their anniversary pattern. So we thought it was a nice fit to use uh, their Thor pattern on our anniversary piece. So it comes with a four-way clip, full flat grind, the Thor pattern made by Damas steel, uh, fluted carbon fiber. 
uh, top notch back lock. For us, the back lock, you know, good, good self close, smooth, solid as a rock, easy button, right placement. Uh, it's one of our most evolved locks. Um, and we think it's a very fitting knife for our 40th anniversary. So this is the fluted carbon fiber native. Um, and then those are all going into production very soon. Uh, then I'm going to show two quick ones that won't be into production for a few months. Uh, they weren't in our catalog, um, but I thought I would give a little preview. Uh, they're variations of knives that we're currently making. Um, this one is the Rubicon. This is going to come with a G10 uh, with a carbon fiber peel ply layer on top, and that's on, on both sides. Uh, it's going to come with a reversible clip. It's going to come with that G10 backspacer that you see on the current Rubicon, except for this one is not flared. This comes with the titanium skeletonized liners, ball bearing flipper, S30V, nice hollow grind. One of the reasons that we're coming out with this one though is because of mostly some comments from some customers. Uh, one being that we tend to get a, some people that don't like the flaring. Those many people do, some people don't. So we thought that we'd give a variation that doesn't, doesn't have that in there. Also it's thinner, so it's not gonna be in the pocket as heavy or as thick. Um, it's going to be less expensive uh, because we don't have all that 3D solid carbon fiber and 3D machined backspacer. Uh, it will certainly reduce the cost. And so it's going to be a lighter, easier carry, less expensive version of the Rubicon uh, designed by Peter Carey. And uh, we're very happy to work with Peter on this one. I think uh, he did a great job of, of continuing to evolve that piece. Um, this one is called the Sage 5. This will be the next one. Um, this comes with a peel ply carbon fiber G10 laminate. Um, it, this comes with an S30V blade. The Sage series was designed to highlight a different lock. So the first Sage that we made came with a liner lock. The second one came with a Reeve integral lock. Then we did a black, uh, Blackie Collins Pittman lock. And then we did the mid back lock, almost a, a front mid back lock. Um, this one is going to be a compression lock. So this has uh, nested liners, uh, dual nested liners, uh, built very much like our paramilitary, but in the Sage pattern. Comes with a nice deep pocket wire clip, nice lanyard hole. Uh, it's a nice evolution for the, the Sage. Um, nice lightweight, strong, everyday carry piece. Uh, this should probably be out uh, around mid-year as well. So those are a lot of the knives that we're coming out with in, in the very near future. Um, thank you for spending the time with me and I appreciate uh, everything that uh, you guys do for us.